so we are Logic Bio. We are developing a genome editing technology that we think is very well suited for pediatric diseases or pediatric patient population. We are a public company since last year, so here is our forward-looking statement. So in a nutshell, uh, here is what I would say. Uh, GeneRide is the name of our technology. It's a first-in-class genome editing uh, technology which has been developed at Stanford in the lab, uh, the lab of Mark K. Very modular platform and very br br uh, broad, sorry. And uh, the main or the lead program for now is called LB001, and it's for a disease called methyl malonic acidemia. Right, sir, I will tell you more about that uh, in a minute. And over the past uh, couple of years, we have uh, assembled a very experienced uh, team of people with uh, great skills in drug development, rare disease drug development, with innovative uh, technologies or modalities. So a bit more about GeneRide, and before I, I tell you more how it works, uh, let me tell you a little bit how we, we see the world and how the team at Stanford was looking at the genetic medicine world when they thought about the platform. I mean, I think everybody here would agree that over the past decades, gene therapy and gene editing technologies have made great progress, and obviously we have some, uh, the first product approved now. Nevertheless, they have shown some limitation in uh, treating some specific patient population. It could be uh, um, um, durability uh, with some techniques, and especially when you are targeting dividing cells, or it could be specificity for, for other modalities. And so the team has decided to I mean, develop this technology, which is nucleus-free, so we do integrate into the genome without cutting the genome, but by harnessing a naturally occurring process called homologous recombination. Uh, we don't carry a promoter with, with uh, with us in the AVs, we take advantage of an endogenous promoter, and depending on the tissue we are targeting, we go after a different gene, and so a different promoter. We call that to take a ride on a gene. That's the reason why we call the technology gene ride. As you will see, it's very site-specific and very tissue-specific. And so with one single injection in very young mice, most of the time we take one-day-old mice, with one single vector, we have been able to provide lifelong uh, a therapeutic expression of the, pro of the missing protein. So on the top uh, right, you can see our product. So first, I mean, in orange is the, the gene of interest. In this case, it's MUT for methylmalonic acidemia disease. It's coupled with a small peptide called 2A peptide, uh, and I will come back to its role at the end of the, this slide. And it's flanked by two very long homology arms. And that's these homology arms, which are between 500 to 1,500 base pair, depending on the, side, the size of the, um, the gene you put in the middle, uh, which are providing this specificity. The likelihood that we would integrate off-target is almost, uh, I mean, nil. So by homologu we, we built these uh, two homology arms in a way to target a very specific locus into the genome. And, and here, as you can see, we do that at the very end of the five uh, prime end, uh, just before the stop codon. So by homologous recombination, you insert the 2A and the MUT, in this case, at the end of the albumin locus in the liver, for example. And uh, when you go to the transcription phase, you end up with a very long mRNA made of the albumin, the 2A, the, and the MUT. And the, the MUT plays a role at the protein expression level. It allows what is called a bicystronic or a protein expression or ribosome by, by ribosomal skipping. It's basically, when the ribosome is, is grabbing the, the, the fused mRNA, it reads the, the full albumin and the 2A, and the 2A is a self-folding peptide, so uh, that's, that stops the, the expression of the first uh, protein and start the expression of the second one with a one-to-one -one ratio. Interestingly, for, for a gene of interest which are not extracellular, instead of uh, going, um, I, I mean, do, doing biopsies, we, we can just, uh, uh, I, I mean, count how many albumin 2A we have circulating into the blood. So some of you may claim, I mean, it's very well known, actually, that homologous recombination is not a very efficient pro process. But we don't treat patients with the number of cells which are modified. We treat patients with protein expression levels, you know. And the protein expression is basically the, the, the product of the number of cells times the strength of the promoter. 
So albumin is a very uh, potent promoter, as, as you know, it's the most potent promoter in the liver and maybe in the body. And it, it dwarfs completely most of the others. As you can see, most of the 2,000 most expressed uh, gene in, into the liver are below 1% of albumin uh, protein expression. So that here is another way to look at it. And if you focus on only 1%, here in orange, it's 1% of the albumin expression. Uh, you can see that it's equivalent of uh, physiological lever, uh, levels of many genes uh, you can be interested in targeting, such as pH, factor 9, and way more than MUT or, or uh, UGT1A1, which is uh, the gene for Krieglund Najar. So I was telling you about the modularity and the how broad the platform was. So uh, here is the, our product, I mean, uh, AAV with a cassette inside. And when we go from one disease to another, we just have basically to, to I mean, basically, we have to uh, sweep, uh, sweep, sweep out one pro, uh, the transgene and replace it by another one. And everything we are learning in the first disease on the homology arm, how it does integrate into the hepatocytes and so on, is something we carry uh, with us uh, for the second disease. And that's uh, how we have been able to develop a lot of proof of concept. Some of them have been published here. If we would like to go after other tissues, obviously you may want to change uh, the capsid, uh, which is the green part of the, of the drawing here, but you have to change the homology arms too to target another uh, locus. And in this case, I mean, we have uh, two, two publications here where we have targeted other cells. Uh, here it's fibroblast and keratinocytes. But we, can, we, we intend to go after other cell types, as I will come back later. Another important part of the technology is our innovative capsids. You know, uh, as uh, you know, for a long time, people have used naturally occurring capsids, and here I'm talking about AVs, obviously. Uh, and uh, we have decided to uh, uh, go for uh, uh, directed evolution and with a technique which is called shuffling. So basically, you de de deconstruct many capsids and re let them reconstruct in a totally randomized way. And it, that way you create uh, libraries of, of capsid. And instead of treating, uh, I mean, testing them or selecting them uh, in uh, black cis mice, just to check which, I mean, to which uh, tissue they are, uh, they are, I mean, which tissue we are targeting, sorry. Uh, we have decided to go after a chimeric mice, which is called FRG. It's a mice with a human liver. Actually, more than 90% of the uh, liver cells have been replaced by uh, human, human cells, hepa human hepatocytes from a cad cadaveric uh, donor. And we think this model is a better predictor than even NHP because here you can select the, the capsids for their propensity to go to the human cells and not to the mice cells. And actually this, uh, this vector called LKO3 is used by, by Spark in the Nemophilia A program. And if you look at their data, I think it's very easy to believe that the, 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 this vector has a very high um, um, transducibility for hepatocytes. So we have decided to continue the collaboration with the L, actually, from LKO3, Leszek Lizowski, who is now in Australia. And we, are, we have a research collaboration with CMRI, where basically they continue to use this uh, shuffling technique and this chimeric type of mice to, to uh, uh, search for more efficient um, uh, capsids in the liver and, and also in other tissues. And we will present some interesting data at ESGCT this year. So a few words about the, the main program for MMA, methylmalonic acidemia. So MMA is uh, an uh, inborn error of metabolism. Uh, there are about 5,000 patients in the Western world. Uh, the, the, in, in the US, interestingly, MMA is on the newborn screening panel. It's one of the few diseases for which you don't have a treatment which is on the panel. And why? It's because physicians, I mean, everybody agrees that you need to identify the patient very, very quickly. These patients are suffering from a mutation in a gene called MUT, and this mutation prevents them to metabolize uh, proteins, uh, proteins. So if you don't give them proteins, they don't grow. If you give them proteins, you basically, you, you elevate the methylmalonic acid levels, which is very toxic, 
leads to lethargy, vomiting, coma, and, and, and death. And, and uh, before that, a, a lot of uh, developmental issues. You know. So very important to intervene very, very early on with a, a technology which is not going to dilute out. So editing is, is a good, uh, is a good uh, modality here. Uh, there is nothing for these patients today. It's only a, a diet, uh, high calorie and, and low proteins. And ultimately, they go through a liver transplantation, which improves a little bit the life expectancy, which is still very limited. An interesting feature of our technology for this disease and what we, that we see with other pure liver diseases is basically by that by modifying the cells, we give them a better um, health. And if you look at the histology panel in the, in the middle, the one on the right, uh, you, you may see some uh, brown dots, which are about 1% of the cells being modified after injection. If you look at the one on the left, it's a few months after. Because the modified cells have been taking over the non-modified cells in this liver, which is under the st stress of the disease, we see, and it has been uh, qualified by an uh, uh, independent pathologist, up to 24% of the liver being colonized by modified cells. Yeah. And it's confirmed by uh, DNA integration assays. Uh, maybe on this one, I will focus just on the, on the panel on the right. You, 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 you need to read the, the Western blood by Collins. And what you can see here after, in the middle, in the blue section, uh, when the, the mice has been treated after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you can see that the protein expression overall is increasing, which is uh, due to the number of cells modified uh, increasing also. So here is our pipeline. Um, Methyl malonic acidemia, as I said, is our lead program. We have demonstrated a proof of concept in hemophilia B, alpha-1 antitrypsin, and krigler najar Those have, uh, have been published. And we are currently working on four other indications internally. The goal for us being to uh, disclose our second indication by the end of, the, of this year. Most of the work I've presented today and, and, uh, and we, ha we have done internally has been directed to the liver. But we, Genride would work also very well, and it has been all, I mean, demonstrated in an early manner uh, with, uh, in other tissues. So just maybe to conclude, uh, and first in class, promoterless, nucleus-free uh, genome editing technology, uh, big product engine, and, and, uh, and we, we have a focus on early onset diseases, so where we, I think we can uniquely uh, intervene. And uh, we have a pretty uh, busy end of the year, as you can see on the right hand side at the bottom of the slide. Where our goal is to file the IND before the, I mean, in Q4, uh, to nominate the second indication in Q4. We are starting the natural history st study as we are talking. And next year, uh, we should start our first clinical trial. Thank you. <laughs>